This much I know, there's nothing we can do The faithful is we earn and work until we prove The safety of our righteousness The way that is is always certain Good for the moon and out for the evening If you're gonna work, it work till you're bleeding I know the road is long And I know the road I know there's nothing we can do The table is an earned The sons don't need to prove The safety of our righteousness The blood is good enough for us Then go for the moon And draw for the evening I know you're gonna love me Love me like you're pleading I know I am my son And I know who Thank you.
Mayugid nga aga sa inyong nga tanan. Welcome to Ictos Next Gen. My name is Pastor Norman and welcome to your online church. 
Wherever you are watching us this morning, maayugid nga aga sa inyo nga tanan. Kumusta na kamo? I hope that all is well with you and your family as we go through these tough times of the pandemic. Last two Sundays ago, we started a new series of sermons in the book of Exodus entitled, God's Plan and Perspective of the Pandemic. And it's all about specific events in the book of Exodus that gives us a fresh perspective of life and reality as we go through this time of the pandemic. Last Sunday, we have learned that God's plan and God's perspective of things may not always be the same with what we have in mind and what we have been doing for years. And perhaps God is using this pandemic to reset us or to reboot us into the persons that He really wanted us to be. Because of the pandemic, we have seen that when we come to the dead ends of our lives, what really matters most is our relationship with Him and with each other. It's not about our degrees or diplomas. It's not about our riches and the money that we have saved or invested. It's all about our relationship with God and with each other. These are the things that really matters most in life not only individually, but even corporately as a church. God is also using this pandemic to make us see the simplicity of making disciples without the fancies of pesos, programs, and properties. In the past, the focus of most churches are acquiring properties and building the largest edifice and having the most programs so that they can attract as many people as they can. When what God really wants from us, His people is to go and make disciples wherever we go. Now with the pandemic, those big buildings were emptied. Even though we have a lot of programs, we cannot implement all of them. And the best that we can do is to minister to the people closest to us. That is our family, that is our household, and everyone and people closest to us. Now this morning, as we go back once again to the book of Exodus, I want to take you to another very interesting account. Into that event when the people of God finally went out of Egypt as freed men and not as slaves. If you have your Bibles with you, please open your Bibles to the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 13, verse 17 and 18. I will be reading verse 17. In the New Living Translation, when Pharaoh finally let the people go, God did not lead them along the main road that runs along the Philistine territory, even though that was the shortest road to the Promised Land. For God said if the people are faced with a battle, they might change their minds and return to Egypt. So God led them in a roundabout way through the wilderness toward the Red Sea. Thus, the Israelites left Egypt like an army ready for battle. Shall we pray first? Our loving God and Heavenly Father, Lord, once again, as we open your word this morning, Lord, I pray that would you speak to each one of us in a very special way. Would you minister to us, dear Lord, wherever your people are watching, wherever they are listening to your word right now, Would you speak to each one of them in a very special way and minister to them in whatever situation in life that they are in right now? Lord, I pray for those who are sick. Maybe they are in the hospitals or in the privacy of their own homes. Lord, I pray that would you encourage them through your word this morning. I also pray, dear Lord, even for those who are separated, those who are in quarantine right now, would you also speak to them and encourage them in a very special way? Lord, speak to each of your people, and even as we go through these tough times of the pandemic, may you use your word. Holy Spirit of God, would you give life to your word to minister to us today as we go through tough times in our lives. Lord, bless your people. Speak to us. Be our teacher. Bless your servant. This is my prayer, dear God, with thanksgiving in my heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, this is a very interesting passage because after waiting for a long time, finally the people of God were going out of Egypt. 
Finally, they were emancipated as slaves. Just overnight, they were transformed from slaves into freed men. And they have been waiting this night for hundreds of years. But look at verse 17 of chapter 13. When Pharaoh finally let the people go, I highlighted this word. God did not let them along the main road that runs along the Philistine territory even though that was the shortest route to the promised land. For God said if the people are faced with a battle, they might change their minds and return to Egypt. You see, sometimes in our lives, although we know that God loves us, and although we are convinced that He only wants the best for us, there are also things that happen along the way that we don't understand why. We don't understand why God allowed those things to happen. We know that God is with us, and He is leading us into the bright future that He promised us, but we don't know why He is leading us through rough roads rather than smooth highways. Now, reading the book of Exodus, we know that God sees something ahead that we don't see. And God knows something ahead that we don't know, simply because He is God and we are not. Our line of vision is linear. What we can only see are the things before us and around us, while God sees all things from on high. Ang vision iya sang ginoo, hindi parya sa aton. He can see everything. His vision is like drone vision. He knows and he sees what lies ahead of us and what lies around us. And if what lies ahead of us will only lead us into something that will discourage us, and if what lies ahead of us will only lead us away from God, you know what? God will always find a way to open another way for us, even if it means leading us to the wilderness of our lives. Listen, my friends. Detours and delays may not necessarily mean denial of God's promises. Detours and delays may not necessarily mean God holding His answers to our prayers. Because of things that only God knows, and because of things that only God can see, sometimes He may lead us into unpleasant places. Unpleasant places contrary to the still waters mentioned in Psalm chapter 23. In order to teach us something very important, in order to develop our characters and our attitudes into the person that He wants us to be. Important things, an important character that we will not learn otherwise if God did not lead us into those unpleasant places. Now let me ask you a very personal question. Kung nakaagi ka COVID, kag nagrabi ka, kag wala ka na kay balo, kung ano ang sunod nga matabo sa imo, ina ba lang wala ka na kay balo kung ma-survive ni mo ang COVID o kung hindi? Ano nga mga bagay ang imo na tunan parte sa Diyos? Makasiling ka ay han nga mas naglapit kapagid sa Diyos, mas nakilala ni mo ang Diyos sa mas personal nga paagi tungod sa mga naagyan ni mo sa kabuhay, specifically sa nagmasakit ka sa COVID. You see, amo na ang akon punto. Can you say that because of what happened and because you survived, you became closer to God this time than before you had COVID-19? In the case of His people in the book of Exodus, what could be the important virtues that God wants them to learn? Applying these principles in our present situation, what lessons can we learn from the examples of the people of God in the book of Exodus? This morning, I want to share with you three virtues and three characters that God wants to develop in His people because of His action, because of leading them out of the way into those rough roads rather than smooth highways. Three characters, three virtues. Number one, 
patience and perseverance. Number two, dependence. If I may add, complete dependence upon Him. And the last but not the least is faith. Simple faith. Let me start with number one. Let me start with the first one. Patience and perseverance. You see, over and over again, in the book of Exodus, we can see that if there is one thing that the people of God needs to have, needs to learn, and needs to develop, it is this virtue of patience and perseverance. Over and over again, when they ask God something in the desert, they want God to respond right away. And they would demand the impossible from God. They would demand impossible things like meat or water in the desert. God has promised to provide for their needs. But it has nothing to do with their need or the capacity of God to give that need. It has something to do with their hearts. It has something to do with the attitude of their hearts. Most especially when they are asking God for something. Most of the time, they are not asking. Most of the time, they are mocking God. They are taunting God. And God has to deal with that kind of attitude. Psalm chapter 78, verse 15 to 19 would poetically describe to us the attitude of their hearts. Verse 15, God's split open the rocks in the wilderness to give them water as from a gushing spring. He made streams pour from the rock, making the waters flow down like a river. Yet they kept on sinning against Him, rebelling against the Most High in the desert. They stubbornly tested God in their hearts, demanding the foods that they craved. They even spoke against God Himself. God can give us food in the wilderness. Yes, He can strike a rock so that water gushes out, but He can't give His people bread and meat. In another version of the Bible, they mockingly ask God, Can He spread a table in the wilderness? You see, ang musin nga klase sang attitude, ining mga tao, nga ginbuligan sang Diyos, nga free sang Diyos, sa ilang slavery sa Egypt. And God has to deal with that kind of attitude in His people. What lessons can we learn from their example? You know, in the same way as we live in this instant generation, wherein we are served instant coffee, instant meals, instant pleasure, instant gratification, we need to learn and we need to understand that we cannot always have the things that we want in life right away. We need to learn and we need to understand that the world doesn't revolve around us. We are not the center of the universe. We cannot always say that with hard work and with luck, we can always have what we want in life. You know, before the pandemic happened, most of us have this feeling of entitlement that we deserve everything that this life can offer. That God is always obligated to give us what we want because we have prayed for it and we have declared His word back to Him when asking for it. You know what, my friends? While God will always be true to His word and God also hear and answer our prayers, let us not forget that He is God and we are not. <laughs> That He knows something that we do not know. That He sees something ahead of us that we cannot see. And in His sovereignty, without explaining everything to us in full detail, He just led us into another way, in another direction. And we have really seen the reality of this happen in the past 19 months of this pandemic. For the first time ever, the whole world came to a grinding halt. For the first time ever, man feels powerless. He doesn't know what to do next and he cannot do the next step because he doesn't know the way. He cannot see the way. But listen, God knows what's ahead of us. God knows what lies ahead of us. God knows in advance what awaits us. God is not the author of evil that is going on around us right now. But for some reasons, I believe 
He allowed all these things to happen to teach all of us, Christians and non-Christians alike, the importance of the value of waiting, of persevering in trials and testings. God allowed it to happen to us to let us see our own powerlessness, our own limitations. And when that happens, if it needs that we will wait, then we will wait. If it needs that we need to learn how to wait, then we need to learn how to wait. If it requires that we follow Him, even in uncharted territories, then we are challenged to trust Him and to follow Him in those uncharted territories. Now let me ask you, who are you following in times like this? Where do you get your guidance and direction in times like this? Kailangga? Ang vlogger nga taga Bacolod? <laughs> Where do you get your inspiration to keep going on? Are you following God? Or just getting by with life until this pandemic is over? You see? God is teaching us the virtue of patience, of perseverance, of the reality that we just cannot always have what we want in life right away. There is a season for us to wait, to learn, to think, to meditate. Follow God. Just follow God. Although you don't know where to go and although you cannot see the road ahead, as long as it is God that's leading you, my friends, brothers and sisters in the Lord, you are safe. The virtue of patience and perseverance. Number two, the next virtue that God wants us to develop, that God wants to develop in His people, in the book of Exodus is dependence. Complete dependence. Now, last week, we discussed partly the gods of Egypt. Now, although by tradition, the people of God in the Old Testament believe in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They have lived in Egypt for more than 400 years. And it is very possible that most of them, if not some of them, have been influenced to worship the false gods of the Egyptians. Maybe some of them said, we have been praying for years to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and nothing happened. Why not this time try to pray to one of these Egyptian gods, in addition to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? That's why in giving the ten plagues, God did not only punish the Egyptians for the hardness of Pharaoh's heart, but those plagues were a direct assault to the powerlessness of the gods of Egypt. You know what, my friends? We are now living in a very syncretistic society. And what do I mean by that? That while everybody claims to believe in God, what they really mean by that is that you can believe in any God that you want to believe as long as you believe in God. You know, sometimes I hear statements like, Okay laman siguro, ina ya pastor, kung bisan sin o lang nga Diyos ang patihan mo, basta ang importante nga kapati ka lang nga may Diyos ang kalibutan. When I was in high school, one of my teachers would teach us ang alagyan ko no pakadto sa langit, damo-damo. For example, kung magkadto ka sa may city proper, if you want to go to city proper, damo-damo ka sang pwede agyan. Pwede ka kaagi sa lapas, when you cross the bridge, halin sa lapas, diritsyo mo ang dalan, makadto ka man gapon sa city proper. Kung halin ka sa haro, o kung sa lapas, o kung sa liganes, May alagyan man nga halindira sa Liganes, sa Haro, pagkato sa Lapas, pagtabok ni mo sa may taytay, ang imong nga lusot, city proper gyapon. Kung halin ka sa Uton, halin ka sa Vilya, halin ka sa Molo, ang yakuno diritso, sina city proper gyapon. Ang langit kuno do amo man sina, ang ambal sang amon teacher. Maski na diin ka maagi, pag gusto ka lang kung diin ka maagi, kung gusto ka magkato sa langit, Para sa alagyan pa sa city proper, lain-lain nga alagyan, pero diritsyo man gyapon sa may city proper. My friend, that is not true. Hindi na siya matuod. Because Jesus Christ Himself said, in John chapter 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes unto the Father except through me. In other words, ang ato na alagyan pa sa langit, isagid lang, si Jesus gid lang. 
Kag hindi man matuod nga it doesn't matter kung sino nga Dios sa kalibutan ang imo nga tuohan ang importante nga nagatuo ka lang sa Dios ang kalibutan. Because the Bible declares in the book of Exodus in Exodus chapter 20 when he gave the 10 commandments to his people. The first the very first of those commandments was I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods before me. You know, studying this event all over again, this time by bringing His people in the wilderness, God did not only took them out from their comfort zones, but He also brought them to a place that they will have nothing. I mean, literally nothing to depend on except God, the one and only true God. Before sila ginpagwa sang ginoo sa Egypt, God showed them the futility of the gods of Egypt. Ang ini nga mga Dios hindi niya tuod nga Dios. Mga Dios Dios ni. Nagaisahanon gid lang ang matuod nga Dios. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God who is leading them out of Egypt and God brought them to the wilderness. To a place that literally they will have nothing to depend on except him, except God. They will have to depend on God for everything that they need. Water, food, shade during the day, and light during the night, and protection against wild animals, and desert nomads, and desert people, and their enemies. Tanan nga ini ilagi lang isalig sa Diyos. Now, I don't know if you have been to a desert. I don't know kung nakakanto ka sa disyerto. Now, last three years ago, I went to the U.S., in California specifically. And my only experience going to the desert is with the high deserts of California and Las Vegas, Nevada. According to my father, when he was still alive, there are times of the year that when it gets cold in the desert, it's very cold. But when it gets hot, it's also very hot. But you know what, my friends, the deserts of California and Nevada are nothing compared to the deserts and wilderness of the Middle East. If you have seen those pictures or watch those documentaries about these deserts in the Middle East, you know that for miles and miles, you cannot see anything but hot sun and dry sand. <laughs> you know, left alone in the desert, you will die in just a matter of hours. But going back to the book of Exodus, we know that they were not alone. God did not abandon them in the desert. Although God led them to the desert, God did not abandon them in the desert. God was always with them. A pillar of cloud to shade them during the day and a pillar of fire to warm them and guard them during the night. God also provided them with everything that they need. Food and water. And even the clothes that they wear didn't wear out. If they need anything, they can directly ask God for it. But you see, over and over again, it's very interesting that instead of asking, they keep on grumbling against God and against Moses. Instead of expressing their dependence on God by asking, they keep on comparing their present situation with their former lives as slaves in Egypt, and they grumbled against God. They would always say, oh, we remember the fish, and the leeks, and the onions, and the meat that we freely eat in Egypt. And whenever their demands were not met right away, they will threaten Moses and attempt to go back once again to Egypt. You know, in the same way, looking at our situation, we can see that COVID really brought us to a place that we don't have anything except God. It is just like being in a desert. Now, I am not referring to a geographical location, but we are now living in a time that we don't have anything but God. And our attitudes and our response to our present situation will, will really matter. Will you turn to God and trust Him with everything that you need? Or you will look back to those days that you were living your life without God? A lot of people are speculating why COVID-19 happened. But as I go back to the book of Exodus, I have seen that it was God Himself who brought them there. Wala yasila nagtalang. 
Wala sila yan ang nakalambot dito kaya tungod wala sila katultol kundi in ang dalan. Exodus chapter 13, verse 17 and 18 would tell us that it was God Himself who brought them there. In a place where they were trapped with a mountain on their left and a mountain on their right, with the Red Sea before them and their pursuing enemies behind them, so that they will have nowhere to turn to except to look upward and express to God their complete dependence. Kung ka isa sa aton kabuwi amo man sina. Ang ginoo nagadala sa aton sa mga lugar o kon kahintangan o kon mga posisyon o kon sitwasyon nga wala na kita sang kantuan pa. Hindi ka kakanto sa wala sa tuo. Sa tubang mo wala ka man kantuan. Trap ka sa likod mo arang imo nga mga kontra. Nga wala ka na sang kantuan pa kundi ang magtanglak gid lang sa Dios. Kad mga ayo bulig sa Dios. And our attitude during these times, when these times come, and when these times happen, is very important. Ang pamangkot ko sa imo, amusin eh. Kumusta ang imo attitude sa ginasugata ni mo ang ining mga butang, ang ining mga bagay sa imo mga kabuhi? Ang unang asa ako ng mga counseling, gina pamangkot, huwag inipirmi sa mga tao nga akong ginalaygayan. yan. May sunggod ka sa Diyos. May laing kasang buot sa Diyos. Kaya nga ah, Importante ni ka ayo bala kay kung ka isa you know as you go through tough times like this ang kapangamuyo ka man sa Ginoo pero tungod ka indi mo dayon mabaton ang sabat sang imo gin pangayo sa Ginoo indi gid malayo nga maglain ang imo nga balatsagon sa Ginoo kag magsunggod ka sa Dios And the last but not the least is faith It is more of standing in the promises of God God has promised them not only to set them free from slavery in Egypt but to bring them to a land that He has promised to their forefathers. A land flowing with milk and honey. When I was young, I was really amazed sa sininga descriptions ng Canaan. Siling ko, ano na ay hano? Ano na klase ng lugar no nga nagailig sa suba? Gatas. Kagdugos. Milk and honey. But you know what? It is a very poetic description of a very fertile land. Isa ba lang kaklase sang duta nga misan ano lang itano mo manubo? kagmamunga amo na ang klase sang duta nga ginpromise sang Ginoo sa ila The only problem is their present situation does not coincide with what God has promised Amo ning ila problema and this is the problem with most of us as well When we put our faith when we put our all in the promises of God but after praying for some time and after waiting for some time we cannot see the hand of God in our situation and sometimes even the worst happen this is where our faith in God most of the time is shaken for more than 18 months now we have been actively engaged in praying and interceding in behalf of those who were infected with COVID and as we pray for these people most of the time God would miraculously intervene to answer our prayers Hospital doors open, finances were provided, and persons who are sick recovered from COVID-19. But there are also a lot of time that other people whom we have prayed for also died of COVID. And in that case, I don't know what to say to the family of these people. I don't know how to comfort them. You know, when times like that happen, it is the time where our faith in God should come in. Amusin na nga mga tiyon sa aton kabuhi nga dapat gani magbakod pagid, kag magligun pagid ang aton nga pagtuo sa Diyos. Let me ask you, how are you doing in these times of the pandemic? How are you holding up to your faith when it seems that all around you is black and dark? Paagi sa mga examples nga ato nakita sa Book of Exodus, we have been given a preview that you know what? When God promises, He will always keep His promise. Sometimes, o galing kun ka isa, kun paano niya ginasapat ang iyang mga promesa, hindi pareha sa aton gina-expect na pamaagi kun paano niya inisabton. Kag kun ka isa, antis niya sabton ang iyang nga ginpromisa sa aton, ginadala niya anay kita sa mga dalanon, 
ka gina-expose sa kita sa iya nga mga pamaagi nga wala naton ginapaabot. E kung mag-abot ang inang ation sama sa midra kita nagakatayog sa aton pagtuo. Kabay patani nga sa nagapadayon kita sa pagkabuwi sa sining tion sang pandemic. Sa likod sang aton nga go through, sa likod sang aton nga magina pangagyan, hindi lang gidiya kita magbuhi. Sang aton pagtuo sa Ginoo. Because in due time, ang Ginoo magasabat gid sang iyang agin promesa sa aton. And as we close sa sininga aga, let me just give you these three thoughts in recap sa ato na pangtunan subong aga. Tatlo ka character, tatlo ka virtues ka gusto itudlo sang Ginoo sa aton. Possibly gusto i-develop sang Ginoo sa aton as we go through these tough times of COVID-19 pandemic. Number one, patience and perseverance. I hope that because of what we are going through right now, we will learn to wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Hulat sa Ginoo. Number two, dependence. Complete dependence. Kabay pa nga sa aton nga mga ginapang agyan sa sining tion sang pandemic, we will also learn to depend on Him. Not only in the case or in the things that we need in life, maybe finances, maybe wisdom what to do next, maybe in terms of protection and healing from COVID-19, but learn to trust God, learn to depend on Him in everything. And the last but not the least is develop our trust in Him. In the words of Peter, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Sa mga tinaga ni Peter, tikun magtalikod kita sa ginoo, kun matay o ang aton pagtuo, kag maguntat kita sa aton pagsalig sa iya, kay sinota abi makanto. Sa diin abi kita makanto, kay wala naman kita sa kantuan pangaiban. Kabay pa, nga sa likod sa aton mga ginapang agyan subong, padayon nagid kita yang nga magsalig sa ginoo. Well, you know how the story of Exodus ended. Eventually, sa likod sa mga twist and turn, sa likod sa mga madamo nga nagkalatabo sa desert, sa wilderness. And most of those unpleasant things that happened were a direct consequence of the sins of the people of God. Ang ending sang story, you know what? Nagindalaman gyapon sila sang ginoo to a land flowing with milk and honey. However, ang sad part lang sang story, na atong yung mga original nga mga tao nga nakagwa sa Egypt, atong mga original recipients, Sang promise ang ginoo, wala na kabaton sini. Wala na ka-experience sini. And you know what separates them from those who were recipients of the promise? Pabalo ka mo kung ano? Their attitude in life. Ang ilang nga attitude sa kabuwi. Instead of trusting God, instead of simply putting their faith in God, most of the time they grumbled and they complained. And they turned their backs on God. Kabay pa, na kung ang anuman nga hindi nga bagay, nga maayo nga natabo sa ila, hindi ini masulit sa aton. Sa aton tion, sa aton inirasyon. Continue to trust in Him. Shall we pray? Lord, again, we thank you for this event that happened in the book of Exodus. That encourage us, dear Lord, how are we going to go through each of our lives, most especially during these difficult times of the pandemic. Ang isa gidiriginoo sa mga pulong ni mo that really catched my attention is that part that says that it is you yourself who lead them in the ways of the wilderness so that they will not be discouraged along the way. Father, I know that this detour of COVID-19 that is happening in our lives right now is a great and has been a great discouragement for a lot of people already. And I just pray, dear Lord, nga kabay pa, ato nga sini, makita nila ginoo ang amo sini nga event sa imupulong. Kag amo sini ang mga encourage sa ila. Nga although ginoo ini nga mga detour, wala nila ginapaabot. Nga although ginoo ang ini nga mga detour have already caused a lot of lives, and cause a lot of damage in our finances and economy. Dear Lord, you have something great, you have something big in store for each one of us, your people. And so as we 
go through these times of the pandemic? Would you develop these virtues, this character of patience and perseverance and complete dependence and simple faith on you? Bless your people, Lord. Bless your church. Strengthen us, Lord, in our faith. This is our prayer. This is my prayer in behalf of your people. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Once again, thank you very much for joining us this morning. And I hope to see you again healthy next Sunday. God bless you. Good morning once again. Saliwat, maayogin nga aga sa inyong atanan. Every first Sunday of the month, we celebrate the Lord's Supper here in our church. And if you have been with us, if you have been following us in the past weeks, we have a series of sermons in the book of Exodus. And here in Exodus chapter 13, verse 21, the Bible tells us, The Lord went ahead of them. He guided them during the day with a pillar of cloud, and He provided light at night with a pillar of fire. This allowed them to travel day or night. You know, when you are traveling in a desert, if you are traveling in the wilderness, and you don't have any compass to guide you, you need a tangible symbol that will guide you every step of the way so that you will not get lost. In the same way, as we go through these tough times of the pandemic, wherein we don't know what will happen next and what to do next, sometimes we also need a tangible symbol of the Lord's presence in our lives to lift up our spirits and to encourage us as we go through our Christian lives, as we go through our individual lives every step of the way. And this morning, as we partake the Lord's Supper, the elements of the Lord's Supper, the broken bread and the juice, once again reminds us of the greatness of what the Lord Jesus Christ hath done for us in the past. Not only that it reminds us of the greatness of God's love for each one of us in the past, it also reminds us of His presence amongst us as we live our lives, our Christian lives, in these dark days. The Lord Jesus Christ Himself promised us, I will never leave you, I will never forsake you. And the last but not the least, the symbols, the physical manifestation of the broken bread and the juice also reminds us of the promise of the Lord concerning our future that He is coming again. And when that day comes, the Apostle Paul tells us in the book of 1 Thessalonians, when that day comes, we will ever be with the Lord forever. But for the meantime, as we partake this, we also share our faith with everybody because the Bible says, as often as we do this, we do proclaim the Lord's death until He comes again. And so this morning, wherever you are celebrating the Lord's Supper, either in the privacy of your homes or together with other believers in your cluster churches, I would like to encourage you of the Lord's presence in our midst through the elements of the Lord's Supper. And so before we partake these elements, let me invite everyone to spend this time in worship, Maybe in prayer of thanksgiving, and maybe in prayer of trust. Once again, claiming the Lord's presence in our midst, and asking for God's grace to stand on His promises. Shall we pray?
Father, as we partake the elements of the Lord's Supper once again, dear Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for passing unto us the ordinance of the Lord's Supper. Thank you very much, dear Lord Jesus, that through this ordinance, through this command, we can celebrate not only the greatness of what you have done for each one of us at the cross of Calvary more than 2,000 years ago, but we can also be encouraged in the present with the reality of your presence and we can be strengthened. Your promises, Lord, for the future also gives us hope. Dear Lord, as we partake this, I pray and I sanctify the elements of your people wherever they are doing this right now, either in the privacy of their homes or together with other believers in cluster churches. I sanctify these elements, Father. Bless these elements. And may as we partake this, you also bless each one of us and use us as a source of blessings to others. Lord Jesus, in your name we pray with thanksgiving in our hearts. Amen. On the night before Jesus died, he took bread. And after giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples. And he said something like this, In a short while I will be gone. But when I'm gone, I want you to remember this. Every time you partake the bread together, always remember my body, which was broken for all your sins. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. And after giving thanks, he said, Take all of you and drink the juice from this cup. But as you drink it, always remember my lifeblood, which was spilt for the remission of all your sins. And so as we partake the Lord's Supper this morning, wherever you are, as you hold the bread in your hand, I want you to repeat these words after me. I eat this bread to remember the body of the Lord Jesus Christ which was broken for all my sins. Shall we partake the bread in remembrance of the Lord? In the same way with the cup, saying, I drink the juice from this cup to remember the lifeblood of the Lord Jesus Christ, which was spelt for all my sins. Shall we drink the juice from this cup in remembrance of the Lord? as we wait for the Lord Jesus Christ to come again. And as we continue to partake the Lord's Supper, the Bible says, we declare His death until He comes again. Shall we pray? Once again, Lord, we thank You for this event. We thank You, dear God, even for the observance of this command that through this we can be reminded not only, Lord, of your great love, of your presence, but also of your promise to each one of us in your word. Bless us, Lord, as we spend another day once again, as we spend another week. Again, we commit to you our lives. We entrust to you all our needs. We ask you to protect our health. In Jesus' name, we pray, amen and amen. Thank you once again. 
God bless you, and hope to see you again next Sunday. Thank you.